put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. In the presence of mine enemies, movie review. 1942, a, the Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, Poland. The rabbi Adam Heller is struggling to keep himself and his family sane amongst the daily demonstration of power by the Nazis where they will drive up and choose a handful of people to be driven off. And you can guess where they will be going. As he also struggles to maintain his faith and to prevent the seemingly ine inevitable uprising of the most embittered Jews who have procured guns. And when his son returns, having served time in the army and escaped from a camp, he is... his son is not the boy that he knew, but a man that he does not know. And the rhetoric that his son is now spewing is terrifyingly reminiscent of what the Nazis themselves say. This is an incredibly powerful film. I have to talk about a few of the lead performances. First and foremost, I mean, I pretty much bought this movie knowing nothing about it because of Armin Mueller-Stahl, of whom I'm quite a fan, and he is incredible in this film. He portrays Adam Heller, the, the rabbi, and having seen him in several other films, I don't recall him ever portraying such a such a character of such strong character if that makes sense. He is defiant in the face of the Nazis, albeit not violently so. He uses the truth excuse me, and verbal provo excuse me, provocation. And he's just you know, and, and when his son returns with this spewing these horrible ideas, he doesn't just ignore it and say, well, you're my son, so I will accept you into my home. He doesn't disown him, but he does respond in, you know, he he, he makes counter-arguments, you know, and he's, he's just, he's phenomenal. In, in the role, and Charles Dance, who I only really know of Alien 3, Clement, and he, he's the bad guy in Last Action Hero, which I quite enjoy. And he's phenomenal in this, as this utterly despicable German commandant. And you just, in, in this movie, you hate the Nazis with a passion. And I think that it's... It, it does a remarkable job of showing the horrors without very much actual bloodshed, 
pretty much everything that we every implication of the of the horrors is yeah it's they're mostly implications they are they're implied they're hinted at we get some told verbally you know the son returns and tells of some of the things that he you know he's experienced some of the things he knows has been going on and we hear the violence or you know we we know that it's going on but we don't directly see it and the film is all the more powerful for it and actually creates one or two utterly unforgettable images of this of, of these horrors and it is it, it does a fantastic job of not only establishing how terrible how terrible the, the Nazis were but also in making that we still do not side with the, the sun spewing this you know this rhetoric against all you know Nazis and all you know well I can't really describe it too much in these but basically he doesn't he doesn't really distinguish he basically just actually he, he pretty much directly you know infers there are the Jews and there are the Nazis and they, you know if you are not with us you are against us and if you are against us you deserve to die a horrible horrible death that is why it's too much you know and Another thing I want to make absolutely clear, we understand why he feels that way. We don't doubt for a second. He doesn't come off as a bad person. He comes off as a severely damaged person. And you understand why, but you still can't side with And it raises these good, these really important moral questions. You know, is it okay for the Jews to do against the Nazis what the Nazis did to the Jews? You know, is it ever okay to have this sort of us or them and, you know, if you are not with us, you must die a horrible, horrible, painful death. You know, it's... I, I do, unfortunately, have to talk about the negatives a little. The film is... I believe pretty much 90 minutes to the minute, in fact possibly to the second, if you don't count the end credits. And in spite of that, it, you know, it, it does kind of drag, frankly. It, it's not a terribly well-paced film. And there are, I'd, I'd say one of the problems with it is that it spends, it, it is determined to establish everything. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's actually accurate. It seems very authentic. It had, they, they basically had all these different things that they wanted to establish as, you know, this is something that happened or this is, you know, this is part of the situation. And for one, some of these things really don't have any kind of payoff. You know, they're, they're just there and, you know, you can say, ah, so that's some of what what it was like back then. You know, at, at most it helps flesh out the situation. And ultimately it's not necessary. That's one thing. Another is that at times the plot doesn't really move or doesn't move as fast as it seems like it should. There are situations that seem like they should have more final outcomes than they do, and it is ultimately, again, you know, like to prolong the, the argument, which it is, it's a good argument. I'm just saying, yeah, there, there wasn't completely room for all of it, you know. And frankly, one plot thread is established fairly early on, and then disappears from the movie for quite a bit of it. Yeah, you know, it, you actually kind of forget that it was there. 
and then suddenly it's brought back so that they can, you know, end the way that they... And it, don't get me wrong, the ending is phenomenal. One thing I do also need to bring up is there is one sympathetic Nazi in this, and it's a really great aspect of it. It's not... It's, it's a very credible character. In fact, the characterization in this in general is great, in addition to the acting. I think Chad Lowe, Chad Lowe portrays this sympathetic Nazi. Okay. Sergeant Lott is his name. And it's just... It, it helps to raise the point that not everyone who is considered to be part of a group necessarily agrees with the group's overall kind of agenda. And, and that is very clear in his character. And it, it adds more depth to aforementioned moral discussion and it adds, you know, some, some nuance to the, you know, other than him, the Nazis in this are just pure evil. And it, the Nazis were absolutely horrible. However, it is necessary to realize that some of the people who found themselves, you know, some of the Germans in that time period did not agree with what was going on, and some of them, you know, didn't know about the concentration camps and the, you know, and the film just does a really good job of making us, you know, just don't judge a book by its cover, basically. But yes, I, in, in spite of these few negatives, incredible film, extremely, you know, it really has an impact on you, and I definitely recommend at least one viewing to anyone who is at all interested in, you know, historical drama, you know, revolving around World War II. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.